Apocalypse means to destroy this world. It's all of us against a god and the most powerful beings on Earth. So I've heard that you were picky before jumping in into sort of the superhero genre. I wonder if you were a fan of the X-Men or this character, or, or what was it about this one that sort of made you go gone hell all, all in? Well, when Simon Kimberg told me that he had offered me the role of Psylocke, uh, my, my first thought was, um, I know that she was in an X-Men before, but you didn't really show a lot of her, mm. and what are you going to do with her this time? <laughs> because I grew up reading the X-Men comics and my you know I'm one of five kids so we'd all share the comics and we'd talk about them and and Psylocke to me she had always been my favorite because she to me was so lethal she telekinetic and telepathic and and she's an amazing fighter and um, and so when she was introduced for a second in a previous X-Men as as a fan I was I was stunned that you know that there wasn't that you weren't seeing more of her so that was my first question was well what are you gonna <laughs> Well, what are, you, what are you doing with her? And um, he explained that you know she's one of the four horsemen, and this is an introduction to Psylocke in this world. And um, and he admitted that it was she was kind of an afterthought. You know, they had um, Simon had they already had Apocalypse and the three horsemen, mm. and then they decided towards the end we need a fourth horseman. Oh, we already have two guys. There's a female. Let's get another female. Like that's how much mm. thought was put into oh, it. Wow. Oh, then which one? Oh, Psylocke. And then they thought of offering it to me. So, you know, I said um, to, si to, to Simon that it would be, you know, such an honor to play her if there was a fight scene. Because mm. to me, that is the most important thing about Psylocke is that she is such a badass fighter. And he's, he was, you know, totally down with it. He's like, cool, whatever, that's great. We'll do, we'll, we'll do a fight scene. So um, that to me was the biggest, you know, reason why I could come on. They said that they would, that this would, they would, do her justice and let her fight. <laughs> so given that it doesn't always happen that the actor playing the character is a fan from childhood, so yeah. being her protector, did that get you through sort of the training or did that sort of give you another level of adrenaline or did that make you more nervous through the process? You know, it's, it's actually, that's an interesting point because, you know, a lot of people, when you, s a lot of people who are in the movies, who are in all of these Marvel movies and X-Men movies, you know, they, they'll, they'll say they like the, 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 the comics, but they don't, they didn't really grow up with it. They're not, they're not, you know, and that's not a bad thing. It's, you know, you want the best actors for the job. It doesn't matter if they're the most hardcore comic books, you know, uh, you know, geeks or not. You just want the best actors for the job. But for me, I did have a little bit of a hesitation in, um, and how, how much I felt uh, about Psylocke. And I remember sending them one, e this long email, but just about, to Simon and the two Simon and Hutch and and Brian of just like, this is who she is, and let me explain this whole thing of where she came from and, blah, 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 and all this stuff. And and at the end, it was just like I totally get it if you want to you know retract the offer because I'm too geeky for you now. Like I've I've literally gone over the the, geeky, the geeky side, um, but they were really cool. Brian was really actually so supportive of it and really excited because sometimes you can work with people and they don't really want to hear what the actor has to say, mm -hmm. but. Um, I think maybe because they didn't really have a t take on Psylocke that they were that they were welcoming to me bringing my take on her. So it was um, I was I was nervous to just have such an, uh, an opinion. But the every time I did speak up, um, you know, it it worked out like the the costume like I was Psylocke was brought in at the end, mm -hmm. you know, right before we were supposed to go shoot. So for money and time, the costume was going to be black and of the sash was going to be purple just to give her a purple tribute but I didn't realize that to the end I thought we were just fitting 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 and then it was gonna be purple and then I when I found out I asked Brian and he made it get, he's I said it has to be just like the comics I mean you just you just don't take a character like Psylocke and not make her look like Psylocke and he did that and then I then I started when I went to um, set and I realized that my stunt double he was very athletic and very talented but had never done stunts before had never done martial arts had never picked up a sword I realized that, you know, with my background in martial arts and having a black belt in Taekwondo, I said to Brian, like, you know, do you mind if I start training myself and, and if I can do, because if I know that, like, I'm not Jennifer Lawrence, you know, I'm not, if, if the fight scene isn't there, it's not going to end up in the movie. So, like, they're not going to do everything they can to make sure it's in there. So it was my job for Psylocke to, to do everything I could to make sure that she has a presence in the movie because... If there was no one there to shoot it, if there was no one there with the physical capabilities to do the fight scenes and to give it, then it wouldn't end up in the movie. So 
it was a, I took it on as a big responsibility to to do everything I could to to give Psylocke, you know, what she Indeed. deserved. Yeah. And it pays off, and I hope to get to do it even more. So oh, it just thanks. robbed me. Oh, so. good to see you. <laughs>